Can you hear me good? No? Austin, can you turn me up? Is it on? Can you hear me now? I hope. Just turn me up just a little bit. Um, let's see. Ruth asked me to make an announcement. Who, are, who of you are going to the uh, airport control tower tour tomorrow? All right. We need to go at 9 a.m. instead of 9.30. The, uh, we don't want to create any stress for the control tower. And they asked us to come a little early. So, right? Okay. Um, let's see. I always like to start off with a little humor. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, it seems a little late in the month to tell you that, but some of you I haven't seen. Uh, you may have heard that I was under the weather. There was a rumor that I passed away, but that's not true. <laughs> I, I had COVID. It was a rough bout. Um, quite a few of our residents right now and associates have COVID. So, if you, anybody feeling under the weather right now? Okay, good. Because otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? Good answer. I love you all. Hurry, our New Year's resolution start in 10 minutes. <laughs> My New Year's resolutions, one, gain weight, two, save less money, three, set realistic goals. Let us go to 2024 and see what happens there. They look a little afraid, don't they? Well, well, it seems your weight is perfect. You just happen to be 11 feet too short. <laughs> Is it o okay? Is it okay to cross? Yeah, sure, whatever. If seeing eye cats were a thing. His imaginary childhood friends were replaced by imaginary adult enemies. I got all the camping gear into the car, but we'll have to leave one of the kids behind. I've been there. It pays to always do what Grandma tells you. If you don't, she'll know. How will she know? Didn't you know Grandma has eyes in the back of her head? Really? Oh yeah, one time I could have sworn I saw an eyeball peek out from the back of her hair. Whoa. I had a Grandma like that. Hey, I told you, keep sticking your nose in other people's business and one day it'll stay that way. Man. It would help us out financially next Christmas if you kids would be bad this year. <laughs> Nose job, squirrel. I don't know squirrels like carrots. Winter break, how it starts. It'll be fun to spend more time with the kids. How it ends. I don't know how much their teachers get paid, but it's not enough. <laughs> All right. Questions and answers. Can you give an update on the repairs to the soft serve ice cream machine in the Rowan? Okay, not the most important issue since everyone can still order a scoop from the bar. Apparently the front door, the answer is, apparently the front door was damaged. A new part has been ordered, but we do not have an ETA as of this writing, and still today we don't have an answer. So we've ordered the part, though. And, and apparently you can order a cup at the bar of ice cream. Uh, question. Numerous residents have asked about the 18 empty apartments on the west corridor of the third floor of the Windsor. There is concern about them not producing income, and what are the plans for them? I love you all thinking about income. <laughs> Way to look out for us. Um, I'm aware that they're empty. Um, they are empty because they're still going through renovation. Um, you may remember, I talked about in a previous chat, that the city of Austin, when they came out to do the inspection, would not approve them. So they want us to put in exhaust ducts for the cook um, vents, the cooking vents, 
and we have to duct those to the exterior of the building. And so now we're having to tear up some of the sheetrock that was installed to install those ducts and then to exhaust it to the exterior of the building. And so you'll see some holes in the hallways, um, sheetrock, they'll, they'll be doing some damage and, and making some demo, demolition work and then they'll put it back. That period of time that that project's going to take is about three months. So they should be finished at the end of March. Um, we did have four of those units um, in, in the old assisted living being used as guest room apartments. And we'll be doing some of that again. We'll have four probably that are set aside for guest apartments. And then the others will be used as temporary apartments while we do some phase four construction. And then also um, eventually be sold as one bedroom independent living apartments. But for now, over the next uh, three months or so, they'll be going through re the renovation. The good news is I didn't put that in the operating budget. So we expected that to take place. We, we don't know the definite date. So we have to wait until the city approves it. Um, so we didn't plan on that income. But thank you so much for thinking about it. Love that. Um, could there be a place on the resident portal where a person could see a list of what events he or she has signed up for without going to each individual event to look for this information? Yes, there is a schedule that you can look at and see the information. Uh, they'll show you a slide that will show that. Is there a way that one could sign into the portal and sign both people up for an outing rather than having to log into each person and separately to sign up? If this is set up, it should allow either a single or double sign-up. Would this be possible? And you can actually use a function called add a guest in the portal and then select another resident and then search for your spouse's name to add him or her to the registration for the event. And this is what the schedule, what happened? I didn't put it in there, sorry. This version doesn't have it. Um, it's, a, it's at the top of the um, page though, right? Um, called schedule. Next, next to the it's a button next, to, it's the a button next to the calendar. It says schedule. schedule. You click on schedule and it'll show you these, the events that you signed up for. Question, can you move the photos of the residents who have passed away to a more prominent place in the Preston lobby? This is clearly not going to go away. So I will look for a more appropriate location and a compromise in the Preston lobby, okay? Um, it probably won't be by the front door, but it will be someplace in the Preston lobby. At one of our past meetings, it was mentioned that the thought was being given to adding more clinic staff on weekends. It was my understanding that this would mean that the clinic would be open seven days a week. Is there an update on this consideration? Um, I believe we mentioned weekend and after hours coverage for the clinic. Um, we were working on a couple different options um, with third parties. Um, one was a telehealth company that we had identified that would provide after hours and weekend coverage for telehealth. Unfortunately, the more we found out about the company, the less we liked them. And so we decided not to go that route. We're still looking at options for that. Um, our nurse practitioners don't want to work weekends. And who can blame them? <laughs> so, so we're looking at other options. Um, we have uh, an agreement with um, Austin Geriatric Specialists. They provide our, our um, medical director and also Dr. Kroll and a nurse practitioner that works in healthcare. And we're talking to them about possibly partnering with us to provide weekend <laughs> coverage. The thing I want you to know about the wellness clinic is fantastic, great services. Um, but we've run it Monday through Friday um, for many years and it really doesn't warrant, the business just doesn't warrant the weekend coverage. Um, most senior living communities don't even have a nurse practitioner clinic, a wellness clinic. Those that do are typically open a couple days a week. So the fact that we're open five is awesome um, and it's a great service, but it's a supplemental service to your primary care physician. We collaborate with the primary care physicians, but it, it, it should not take the place of your PCP, your, your main physician. Um, it's really a convenience and a supplemental service to that. 
Um, we do have emergency coverage on the weekends and after hours through our health care center nurses and also Kimberly Gill, the health services director in assisted living, Robin Gonzalez, um, Aikens, um, health services or health and wellness director in independent living. Um, both, all of those folks um, respond to emergency call and also all of our concierge and security have been trained as first responders. I'll update you um, if that situation changes, but I don't expect it to anytime soon. Um, there may have been an announcement of this that I ignored, but who and why are our apartments being measured? And I should have mentioned this, I apologize. Um, this is only happening in the Preston building. Um, you may have remembered that I, in the past, did a chat, I mentioned that we were looking at a project to sprinkle the Preston building. One of the residents suggested, hey, while you have the ceiling tiles down, just go ahead and throw a sprinkler up there. It's a great idea, um, but you have to create a plan. Um, to really create a plan for a sprinkler system in the Preston building, you have to have good drawings. And the Preston building was originally built in 1967 there aren't really good drawings. Um, the drawings that we do have are partially complete, and then there's been so many combinations of apartments and changes to the Preston over the years, we really have to create new CAD drawings. And so Pi Architects is measuring all of the apartments and trying to get those drawings for us, digitized, and then once those are digitized, then we'll send those to sprinkler contractors for them to create a plan and give us a bid on a sprinkler system for the Preston building. Uh, and so that's, uh, it's a big deal. It take, it's a little bit more difficult than just throwing some you know, garden hoses up in the, the ceiling or something. You have to kind of create a plan, get it approved by the city, and undoubtedly they'll come in at some point and tell us it's not approved, and then we'll have to make changes <laughs> and all of that again. Because that's what happens every time. Um, question, is there additional wayfinding signage coming for Preston Building? Yes, there is a correction signage package that is being planned and produced that will include additional wayfinding signage for Preston and also some correctional signage. Um, a resident or two have been helping us with that process and, and I, even they will admit their frustration, I'm sure. <laughs> signage is hard. Um, but we're working on that, and it's um, they're they're working on a plan right now, and then production should happen shortly. But it's still coming, and it's at their expense because they made a lot of mistakes. Um, question: Will residents on the third floor of Windsor have access to the new associate space? Most likely not. Um, this space will be dedicated to the associates, but it's easy to get around the space. Uh, most of the associates are going to be using the service elevators to get to the space, but it's really dedicated to the associates' use. If you allow residents into the space, then the associates want to serve the residents, right? It's really a space for them for themselves just to relax, um, you know, for 30 minutes for lunch and then or their meal breaks and then 15 minutes or so for a regular break. Updates. So if you haven't heard, um, visitation is still allowed in healthcare center, but masks are required to be worn in all those um, levels, first and second floor. Um, the, Ar the Arbor Healthcare Center has some resident associates, resident and associates that have COVID currently. Um, and so we're monitoring those cases. Most of them have been light symptoms to no symptoms, but they're popping positive, so we're having to um, kind of mask up again and be careful about signing in and all of that. You need, residents really need to sign in through the AccuShield station, even when you're visiting um, health care or assisted living, right? You need to sign in through AccuShield because the state requires us to keep a log of all the visitors. So if we had an outbreak, we can trace it back to the source. And if that's a reminder if you do have COVID not to go into healthcare or assisted living, right? Spectrum Wi-Fi boxes are being installed. Um, Wi-Fi should be live soon. So Windsor has been completely installed, I believe. Everybody in the Windsor have Wi-Fi boxes now? Yeah. 
Um, Preston, they did ground floor and they're working on first floor now. Um, and then all of those boxes, all of those um, wireless access points are called. Once they're installed, then the system can go live. Um, but all of those have to be in place before it does. But the good news is they're finally installing them after many, many months of begging. So um, that's good news. And that'll create redundancy. We'll have the My Westminster Wi-Fi, which is all campus, and then you'll have individual Wi-Fi in your apartment. So you'll be able to have um, wireless printers hooked up to your own IP address. And if you have Wi-Fi yourself, you won't have to carry that anymore if you don't want to. Um, but it's it's good. It should be really good Wi-Fi. It's uh, 300 megabits per second, which is really good. Um, Preston HVAC plumbing replacement is complete on A and B wing. Should be done uh, for sure by the end of January. They're still putting some of the ceiling back and some of the walls back. The ground floor is very complicated. So it, there's a, I don't know if you noticed or not, but when they took down that ceiling grid, there's a lot of pipes up in that ceiling. That's where the, the majority of the pipes all run for all of the floors into that space, and it's distributed from there. So it's gonna be really complicated over the next couple weeks. They're gonna get that replaced, then they'll get it insulated and put that ceiling back, hopefully by the middle of February. Um, and then we'll move on to C-Wing. Um, and C-Wing is more complicated than A and B-Wing because they decided to design C-Wing a little different. Instead of so many horizontal runs that are in the corridor, there's vertical runs that are in the apartments. And so we're gonna have to address those on a case-by-case -case basis. What we plan on doing is isolating the floor, each floor on C-Wing with an isolation valve so that we can shut off, shut off just that little section and maintain air conditioning for the rest of the building. We'll start that work in March and I'll let you know more as we go along. And I'll probably meet with um, the C-Wing folks in Preston to kind of give them an idea of how the work will progress and where we'll start and where we'll end up. So, But the goal is to have that done in about six months. Um, but the good news is we won't have to have the air conditioning system shut down for six months because all of this work has been completed um, we'll be able to maintain air conditioning in the Preston during the summer, and I imagine it'll get up to 100 degrees, and we'll be glad we have it. Um, I mentioned it already, but um, Pi Architects is measuring apartments. That's for the uh, Preston Building Sprinkler Project. Also, um, the keyless entry system has gone through its um, on online function, so it's now all of the um, system has been brought online. That, if you remember when we first installed that system, the goal was to be able to unlock your apartment from the security desk, and we can now do that. Um, so if you lock your keys in your apartment, we can unlock the, the apartment for 10 minutes at the security desk or the reception desk with a password. So that's good news, and we're glad to finish that project. I think that's mostly Windsor and Preston at this point. We don't have the Carlisle completely online yet. So one, it should be online the next couple weeks. Um, this was brought up by a residence and I was glad that they brought it up because I kind of noticed it too. Um, there's really not a good connection between the Carlisle and the Windsor for somebody that has mobility challenges like a wheelchair, motorized scooter, walker. Um, we have an area that's down the center going into the Windsor, um, but it's brick, and it's kind of rough to walk along. Um, it's also really rough for a wheelchair to be pushed on it. Um, and then you can go around on the sidewalk, but that gets you near the street, and the people on the street aren't always doing a good job of staying on the street, so we probably need to avoid that area. So we're gonna put in a new crosswalk, and we're going to put in an ADA ramp on the Windsor curb, um, going to healthcare and then also on the Carlisle curve, so there'll be another crosswalk there. Um, and we'll be doing that over the next three, four months. We have to get it, the, the plan is here, I'm showing you a drawing. Um, 
and uh, get the plan approved, of course, and then we, then we go to bid, um, and then we'll build it. So we'll rip up some concrete and make that change. I think it's going to be a good change, though. Um, just a reminder, I've noticed quite a few of you enjoying the Rowan. I'm glad to see that, um, the cocktail lounge and everything. The hours for the Rowan restaurant are um, still 4.30 to 9, Tuesday through Sunday. It is closed on Monday. Um, you do need reservations for parties of five or more. The Rowan Cocktail Lounge is open 1 to 7 on Mondays. Uh, the Dye Room Restaurant is closed. The, Ro the Rowan Cocktail Lounge is open from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. And here's the number. And of course, walk-ins are welcome as long as four or less. Um, I get asked a lot about how do we how do we teach our associates to be so hospitable, um, good customer service, and we really do have a great uh, associate culture. Um, one of the things that has been a big part of that is a program we brought on board about 15 years ago um, called Extraordinary Impressions, and it's really a hospitality training program. And this is the um, kind of the vision statement. Extraordinary Impressions drives high quality customer experiences for everyone Westminster serves. Um, through this, we passionately and proudly differentiate ourselves. We meet and exceed the customer's expectations. That's our goal. We consistently demonstrate our service culture and recognize all who embody it. Um, so, you know, kind of extraordinary together mantra, um, the hospitality promises that we have. We teach to all of our associates the first day that they come to work here. And we talk about hospitality every day. And I, it's hard to get good hospitality now, isn't it? Outside, I feel like, outside of Westminster and chicken, chicken, what is it, chicken? Uh, huh? Chick-fil-A. Chick -fil other, other than Chick-fil-A and us, I don't know where, where good customer service hospitality is anymore. Um, if you all know of any good places that have great hospitality, let me know because I'd like to experience it again. I haven't had a good restaurant experience except for this place in a long time. Um, so a lot of hospitality promises were greeting you warmly by name with a smile, um, paying attention to the details, just all of these things that differentiate ourselves from the competition. And this is, um, this is the training modules and training uh, program that we use to educate our associates. And the other thing is resident center care, which I've talked to you about before, centered around resident power services. And those, that also um, separates Westminster from the competitions. So as part of this extraordinary impressions, I, I talk about this just about every chat, we have star cards. And if you experience extraordinary hospitality, whether it's in the restaurants or maybe in your apartment the housekeeper just did an extraordinary job or maybe the concierge helped you out with a problem that you had or just really did something above and beyond the call of duty or just something just always is a is a great example of hospitality i had a a letter recently about maria and the bistro actually she works in both restaurants maria has been with us about 26 years she gets to know you, knows what you like, and, and really delivers it to your table. She thinks about you and trying to exceed your expectations more than meet your needs, and um, the, she expresses that every day, and, and we get a lot of good comic cards about her, and there's others. And then there's people that, you know, plan operations, maybe they fix the light bulb for you, but there's also people behind the scenes that you never even see. Um, the accounting department that pays all the bills. You know, you don't think about the accounts payable lady, but if she didn't uh, pay all the bills, we wouldn't have electricity and water and all the cool things that we have. Lois, who works for me, she doesn't get seen a lot. She's my executive assistant, but she works really hard and puts up with me every day, and that's hard. Um, trying to keep me from triple booking myself or whatever. So if you, you know, take a moment, fill out a star card. You can get them at any reception desk. You can turn them in any reception desk, you can send me a note, you can send an email, and we make sure that we keep track of those throughout the year, and those are what our awards um, that we give out in our award ceremony are based on, which we actually have an award ceremony in February, I believe. Um, the 20, 22nd. 22nd? 
and it'll be right here, and, and the associates love it, and it's a great, um, great time. So um, take time, fill out those star cards. <clears throat> awards and accolades. So we have received some awards already this year. We just um, received word a couple weeks ago. You may have noticed that um, we got the JD Power Award for the fifth year in a row. Um, our management company, LCS. So we there's a JD Power Award. I think at the marketing desk and one in healthcare. And there's a little banner up in healthcare right now. We also received word that we are five stars again for the fifteenth year. Um, so this is the Center of Medicare Medicaid Services. I think I talked about that in an earlier chat. Um, we were awarded Best Nursing Home Long-Term Care and Short-Term Care by U.S. News and World Report. And that's our 16th year. Anybody know how long I've been here? 16, 16 years. That's right. Uh, we closed our last Carlisle apartment. First generation Carlisle apartment um, was closed um, January the 4th. So that was really exciting for us. When you open an expansion, um, you know it's kind of a it's kind of a big deal filling it up, and you kind of you plan for a fill up schedule. And what we actually planned was to have our Carlisle building filled in August of 24, and so we actually beat the schedule and had it filled in just a couple months. So it's really really cool and the the best part is that we were able to retire 47 million dollars in debt eight months early and that's good for you all and it's good for west Minnesota. So absolutely i should include that in these accolades shouldn't i um we also graduated 19 graduates of our leadership institute and the leadership institute is for new leaders um, that are being promoted and they're being grown. Um, some of them started out as um, servers. Um, Oliver, you've met. Um, we've talked about how you know, he started out as a, a steward. Um, but all of these folks graduated from that leadership institute. And, and our most important resource is our people, right? And we want good leaders to work with our people, to inspire them to do well and to appreciate them and so that's really what this leadership institute is all about um, so we're proud of all those folks um, this week i took ruth and maria and all of our activities professionals out to lunch in the laurel that's why i was in there having lunch with them if you noticed um, it is half it is activities professionals week and so we do celebrate all of our different weeks there's environmental services week Nursing Home Week, Assisted Living Week, there's weeks for everything. But we wanted to really pay attention to our activities professionals this week, and they're extraordinary. Ruth, Maria, Brooks, Derek, Monica, and Stacy all do our activities. Um, in 2023, we had more than 17,000 activities here at Westminster, uh, which is fantastic, really. Um, absolutely. And the interesting thing is this does not include the committees, the non-scheduled activities, and the spontaneous activities that we do. Um, so thank you all so much. Thank you, Ruth, for doing such a great job. And just as an example, I wanted to show you what a typical independent living calendar for activities looks like. Anybody seen anything like this before? <laughs> Ms. Pearson, you have? Oh, absolutely. They post these online a lot of them like they're proud of them. And these have, this one has committee meetings and exercises in the calendar. And they still only have five or six things happening in a day. This is what ours looks like. Right? That's pretty cool. There, I don't think that there's, and I mean this, I, I do, Ruth, there is not a senior living community in the country that matches our activities program. And that's really cool. So, so that's the that's the activity calendar, and because our exercise program won't fit within it, it's on a separate page. That's just awesome. So, so keep up the busy fun. I love watching it. So, um, who wants to talk about phase four, or would you rather ask some questions? Who wants to ask questions? Raise your hand. Who wants me to talk about phase four? Raise your hand. 
Okay, page four it is. I had a feeling I was going to win. <laughs> okay. So, so far, the schedule hasn't changed much. Um, we're still thinking that we're going to start in January of 25, assuming everything goes well at the city. Um, and that means the construction documents are approved through the permitting process, right? The project is planned for about 16 months. Um, we are going to do our very best to mitigate sound um, and inconvenience, try to keep the areas open as much as possible. And we have done this kind of work in the past. Um, this is a little bit of what it looks like. Um, up to the top, you can see that that's the um, west courtyard, which has always been an underutilized courtyard for us. Um, there's going to be a new dog park located in that courtyard. Also, um, a little bit of a walking path, which is going to be ADA compliant. It's currently not. So that's an issue that we really need to deal with. We've talked about the generator being upsized because we don't want to be caught without electricity again, um, especially for several days. So it's our goal. Good news is we've been able to determine that we can repurpose the Windsor generator at the Preston, which should save us some money. But the Windsor generator will be able to serve all bells and whistles in the Preston, which is really good news. And you can kind of see, um, let me stand up and show you. You can kind of see the location for the Windsor generator right here. And then it'll have a fireplace that kind of sits there and then a deck that comes off of the fireplace. Um, so the, if you're in the dining room, you won't be looking on a great big generator. You'll actually see a fireplace. All the carports and everything get kept on that side. The dog park and a shade area will be right here. And this dog park's about two and a half, three, three times the size of the small dog park that's up at the Carlisle. And then the um, courtyard gets a rework. We do keep the magnolia tree and the oak tree. Um, they're doing what they can to create a care plan to keep it um, happy and healthy for the next 20, 30 years or so, hopefully. Um, they're, they're reworking this, so the coffee shop would be located here and has exterior um, courtyard and then there's going to be a wrought iron fence likely that runs the length of our campus, um, and, but it will have a panel that can be removed and a, like a food truck or something could be brought in or if we need lawn care equipment it can be brought through that space as well. This is um, the corner. So this is Jack, it was facing Jackson Avenue. The marketing offices are, are right here now. So this becomes conditioned space and, and is enclosed. The coffee shop is right here and it exits into the courtyard if you want to or you can go back into the corridor of the building. That's a rendering of it. <clears throat> and then this is the conservatory. Um, the conservatory is facing that this is a from the Preston courtyard central courtyard looking at that wall where the elevator exhaust fan is and so this conservatory comes about 24 feet off that wall so it really kind of uses the part of the courtyard that we really never used it was kind of wasted space anyway and it becomes an inside um, basically out, outside coming in so there's going to be some trees and plants and some seating it'll be air conditioned of course and it's two stories tall, the third floor has an outside deck with some umbrellas and shade structures and stuff like that. And there'll be a green wall that runs from the very bottom of it all the way to the top. <clears throat> this is the West Courtyard rendering, so this is what that fireplace looks like and the generator sits behind that baffled wall right there. And the reason that's being put around the generator is to mitigate sound and also the ugliness. Because some people don't like a baby blue big O engine. I do, but it's not very attractive from your dining room probably. So, um, no, I don't want to go through that one. <clears throat> so this is um, a rework of the Preston lobby. One of the things that the Preston lobby doesn't have that the uh, other lobbies do have is vestibules in between the entrance door 
and the outside. Usually there's a set of two doors that kind of keeps the cold and hot air from blowing through there. That's um, something that we're going to be adding in this phase four project. There's a vestibule here and then a vestibule on the front that's going to be added and then also on the west side um, to help with controlling of the temperature in those spaces. Also, one of the things that we've always wanted to do is have this much more open. So this is the cocktail lounge bar area that opens from the lobby. So you'll be able to see through to that space instead of the lobby being kind of a pass-through space, it'll open up to that cocktail lounge. And then there'll be some, this is the bar here, and we're going to have two levels, so it'll have short, it'll have regular seating like you're sitting in now, and you can also have bar stools if you want to get up higher. Um, and it wraps around, the seating wraps around this bar, and then there's some waiting areas, conversation areas right here that'll be facing the dining room. This is um, new space. This new corridor is being added to the exterior of the dining room and then to the, the central corridor here is being moved to the outside. And then this space is going to become activity space. Um, so Ruth's office will be relocated to that area. Um, there'll be a multi-purpose space that sits about 150 people. When, all, when the doors are open, there's an activity kitchen. Um, there'll be arts and crafts area, a lot of storage, a lot of case work to be able to do multiple things in that space. So, let's see, I talked about, so this is where the lobby is. The marketing offices are right here. And then this is the corridor that runs the exterior of the building. So all of this right now is open sidewalk. And there's a ramp in there. And it gets kind of slippery when it's wet. Um, so all of that's going to be conditioned space, closed in space. And then it meets the corridor on this side of the coffee shop. So the coffee shop is here. And then the corridor wraps around it. There'll be um, a theater, I believe. No, this is the salon. And then the um, game room, bowling alley, arcade, whatever you all decide to put in it will be here. And it goes along here and then meets the theater up there at the top. And it's a theater with uh, an inclined floor. This is a rendering of the conservatory. It's pretty cool looking. I've already heard from residents that they hate these chairs. <laughs> the good news is there's only four of them in the plan. But if you, I guess if we raise enough havoc about it, we can probably eliminate them. Um, so you can see this is all glass. Um, trees are actually growing within the space. These are live plants. These likely will not be. This is the second floor. So instead of a wall being beside the elevator, it actually opens into the conservatory. Looks pretty. Actually, this uh, this. Uh, designer he made it into an interior design magazine. Be ashamed not to make it. This is busy, isn't it? So this is a rework of the lobby dining room concept, right? Um, so the corridor wraps around there's this kind of loop here that's a wall. It's kind of a decorative interior focus wall. The bar is here, the cocktail lounge is here, and then it goes into the rest of the diner. And there is some outdoor dining capabilities available. Is the and be, this is the Laurel Diner Room, Preston Building. Sorry, I just assumed. Shouldn't do that. <clears throat> yeah, that's the Laurel Diner Room. Where's Mel Broom gonna go? It stays where it's at. Yeah. 
Sorry, I'm getting buzzed constantly here. The private dining room is moving from that part to this back wall, which is the back dining room that doesn't get used much now. It also, it'll be frosted glass, kept the same. That's the area that looks out onto the air handlers for the kitchen and the dining room. The kitchen, the dining room is in this plan. The kitchen and dining room are separated. The air conditioning is independent in the dining rooms and each zone will have air conditioning control. The private dining room should seat about 20, 20 people, 22 people. Closed. Oh. You know, you'll have to close it for renovation, yes. Yeah. Where are we going to eat? Outside. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so what we'll do, actually it's kind of good though, because, you know, do you remember, anybody remember when we used Harris Bell Hall for the dining room? Nobody? I'm, I'm, I'm the oldest person here. <laughs> Maybe I have more tenure than anybody else. Um, so we used Harris Bell Hall for dining room one time. So right now, this is, it's nice because we have the bistro um, and we have the Rowan. And so we can use those two spaces um, and change the menus a little bit to provide the, the same type of service. But the, you know, the bistro can handle, and the Rowan together can handle the additional. We'll open the Rowan for lunch um, as well as dinner. And then of course the staff, the associates will move up there. Um, so we'll be able to handle it. And it should be for about, six months, we should be able to knock that dining room out pretty quickly. Um, and that's kind of one of the first things we'll probably get handed back to us, is that dining room. Yes, sir. Have you given any thought for either the Rowan or the Laurel, whatever is best, for a small piano bar? A small piano bar. So that maybe once a week you have some live music playing as you go to dinner. And also, no, but we'll add that to the list. We could, there's no reason we couldn't. And also the song there is a there is a speak yeah I'll talk I'll talk to, to you all about more of this, but there is kind of a speakeasy um, in this Preston rework. So it's on the first floor um, kind of where uh, Billy Jones apartment used to be. It's located there, and there'll be music and a piano capability there, and some wine tasting, whatever programming we decide to put in there. So this is what the Laurel Dining Room will look like, or the Cocktail Lounge. Pretty nice. Except for um, this section here, this section here will be lowered. Um, so that residents with mobility problems won't have to worry about getting up on the bar stools. Those of you that like to hop on a bar stool, they'll still be able to towards the other section. So um, when we continue to walk up that corridor past the coffee shop, um, this is kind of the game room concept. The bowling alley is kind of right here. Um, then there's other games and whatever. And then the theater a new um, screening theater with a small stage and a new um, screen, movie screen, surround sound experience, so a really good place to watch movies dedicated to that and to other presentations, but, and it'll have an inclined floor, so it'll go down towards the screen, which will be kind of nice. Oh, and here's the um, little speakeasy space right there. Persistent. Um, so this is the coffee shop. And the, the coffee shop and the conservatory have what, what are called nano walls. So they can be folded up um, and then allow for outside access like we could have a big party or you know kickoff party for alzheimer's or whatever we could open all those doors and just have a really nice big event which is nice uh, for these spaces uh, 
Uh, Bruce, somebody asked a question. Can you raise your hand and we'll... I didn't hear that one, sorry. Any chance you're going to contract with Starbucks? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Um, we, we had at one time, um, that was mentioned, a, a, a Starbucks kiosk. Is their coffee really better than ours, though? <laughs> How many people think Starbucks coffee is better than ours? Five people. That's probably not. <laughs> I don't know. That's interesting, though. I, you know, Starbucks does have a lot of choices. I totally, totally get that. My daughter goes there, but she never gets coffee. She gets some kind of juice drink. And my wife gets a milkshake. That's what I call it. It's a frappe or something. I'm like, that's not, that's not coffee. But anyway, yes, ma'am. Uh, your design seems to have a lot of open spaces. Mm -hmm where all different activities are happening around flexible spaces yes uh, well yes and open to the for instance the dining room is open to the bar which is open to the entry to the um, so my question is do you have an audiologist working with you because our one of our main ways of community of, of getting together is at meals and often it's very difficult to hear when there's a big crowd and there are people coming in, for instance, uh, into the uh, Carlisle and then there's people at the bar. Uh, it just gets very noisy and it's hard to hear and hard to have a conversation, um, particularly it's, when you have hard floors. Yeah, um, the, and we talked about that. So we don't have an audiologist working with us. We have an acoustical engineer working with us. Um, and that's, that is definitely one of the considerations. Um, one of the reasons we want to keep the carpet in the row, not the row, the laurel dining room is to keep the sound down. And also, you notice the, the ceiling grid, how it has the fur downs and the wood separations, and then there's um, acoustical tile being used in the laurel to keep sound down as well. So it should be a really quiet, dining room. I hear that concern a lot about the bistro. Um, now it's a really, it's a noisier um, dining room. It's more casual. It's kind of faster paced than the, the Laurel. And so that's kind of, we are thinking about that though. And um, we don't have an audiologist, like I said, but we do have an acoustical engineer and I think they're really doing a good job. And they're going to be measuring the sounds and the spaces that we currently have and doing their best to mitigate. Right, and I actually, yeah, I told them to plan on putting those kind of curtains in the laurel as well. Um, yeah, I added those after the fact. We did not have an acoustical engineer involved in the um, Carlisle building. I was told we didn't need one. So I learned a lesson from that experience and have employed one in this project. Also, I have a lot of residents, con not a lot, but I have a few residents concerned about pickleball noise. And so I wanted an acoustical engineer for that as well. Um, I'm going to, okay. One, one more. One, one more question and then I'll move on to the rest. In consideration of all the eating, new eating places and joining areas, are you, is anybody thinking about how we can walk dogs through without getting in any trouble? In between eating areas and so You can't, well, you can't walk um, in between the cocktail lounge and the um, restaurant, but dining room, but you can walk the corridor around the restaurant. Yeah, there's good connection still. I think you're still able to get around with your, your pets really well. Yeah. And actually, I think this... Uh, the new corridor is going to be, you know, ADA compliant, which is great. It's going to be wider. Um, it's a better design than what we currently have. Where uh, one of the things I've always hated about the Laurel Dining Room is you're walking through the Laurel Dining Room as a connection, and so people are passing through there with carts and noise, and it's just ugh. so. The, so this new uh, 
corridor, I think it's going to make a huge difference in really keeping down the, the, the sound in the space, the disruption in the space, really allowing people to get to walk around it instead of walk, walking through it, which is never great for dining. Um, I forgot where I'm at. Oh, second floor. So the second floor, what we have right now is the library is right here. Um, and in this plan, the library becomes a music room. And then a new library is built across the hall. Um, this will be underneath what is going to be Harrisville Hall um, connection space and a new um, corridor taking, it to, taking you to the, the rec room. But the library doubles, more than doubles in size. And then we're adding this little um, help desk for IT help. So if you're having problems with your iPhone or Android or whatever, you can take it to that desk. And I'm hoping that res between residents and associates will be able to man that space a couple hours a day and offer quiet help that doesn't disrupt the librarians. And, uh, but you still have a really nice space there. Um, we're excited about that. Then we're, we have the corridor that I'm excited about. So you're gonna have this corridor on the first floor but also on the second and third floor that connects A and B wing, which will make it a lot easier for those with mobility challenges to not have to go back all the way to the core and get connected to the other side of the building, but it'll really improve that. And then the conservatory, like I said, you can see through to the conservatory here and here, and you'll be able to see down into the conservatory. We keep the elevator here, And then, let's see, anything else I want to tell you? Oh, there's a, a new chapel that's being added here on the second floor, which is a resident apartment currently. <coughs> the computer just said it was enough, huh? I just have to mean it. Okay. Um, so this is the third floor. So one of the things that Harrisville Hall is a great space. We've done a lot of improvements to it. The AV is much more improved. Um, we've added cameras, so that's going to be an improvement. Um, but one of the things it's really never had is a receiving space nor enough storage to put tables and chairs. Um, so we're adding those spaces in this. There'll be a receiving space here. Um, and then this is the conservatory deck. So it'll be an outside area that residents can enjoy. There'll be planters, raised planters here. If residents from the Preston want to do some gardening, they can do that here. And then the receiving space for Harris Bell Hall will be located there. And then again, the corridor between A and B wing here. And then there's a, a ramp, an ADA accessible ramp that goes along these new spaces, which is storage for Harris Bell Hall. And you walk along here, this is a ramp up to the new rec room, club room, which has views of the multi-purpose courts, including the pickleball court. Um, and then it has this, which is a game simulator. So you can do golf, kickball, baseball, tennis, whatever you want to do in that space. Um, you may have seen those before. Anybody experienced a golf simulator before? Game simulator? Yeah? Okay. Um, the rec room is going to have a lot of soft seating with great views of the outside. Um, it also have a new bar area, kind of a a place for you all to host your happy hours and stuff permanently that um, will have space for you all to work at the Bartenders Guild. You'll be able to have um, your, your happy hours in this dedicated space. So, and they'll have access, of course, to the balcony. Um, and then the billiards table, ping pong table will go right here. It's a multi-purpose table that you take the top off of. When you're wanting to play billiards, you put it back on. When you want to play ping pong, um, let's see, I think that's about it. <coughs> let's 
the um, same screen that we put on the memory care porch is what we're going to put around the pickleball court. And then this is, of course, sound, it's called a sports court foundation and sound mitigating. And then we'll be using sound mitigating paddles and balls. And then we're going to control the hours of operation. Nobody plays before 9 o'clock in the morning. Nobody plays later than 9 o'clock at night. Um, so those of you that have a great view, the pickleball court won't be disrupted in your sleeping patterns. Okay. Um, I think that's okay. So just to go through some benefits, one of the biggest benefits and one of the most uh, costly parts of this phase four is the generator upgrades. The electrical portion of this project is about nine million dollars, but um, in that $9 million, you're getting new, um, some new electrical work in the Preston building. You're getting generators that serve both the Preston and Windsor, all bells and whistles. So if you lost power um, for any, any period of time, you would be able to run the, at all three buildings for up to seven days under a full load um, with what we have in fuel on site. If we lost natural gas, we'd be able to run for four days. Um, so it's a combination of natural gas and diesel that allows us to do it. And this is a, a board priority is getting them because we expect there to be more weather emergencies and we want to be prepared for them. Um, it improves the West Courtyard to include the larger dog park, usable space and sound mitigation, improves the deck off the Laurel Dining Room because it's kind of, it's, it's slightly usable but it's not great. Um, further secure the Preston Courtyard and the campus, um, improve the courtyard and the Preston systems. I think I've talked about before, when we redid the Preston roof, we had to add a bunch of roof drains to make it co-compliant. But when we did, there's a lot more water going into the Preston Courtyard. So we need to upgrade the Preston Courtyard stormwater drainage anyway. Um, and when we do that, when we touch it, we have to make it ADA compliant, which makes sense. We should be ADA compliant, right? And so there's a big part of that in this project. Um, HVAC improvements, so air conditioning, heating improvements for the Laurel Dining Room and Kitchen. Um, improved connectivity between the Preston and the Windsor and A and B wings. Also, um, better accessibility. Addition of another secured courtyard to the campus. Increased programming area. So I can't wait to see what Ruth is going to do with all these new spaces to, to program and what you're going to do with them. Uh, more wellness spaces, larger library, which we would like to have, um, indoor sports simulator for golf and other games, a game room with bowling, billiards, foosball, etc., an outdoor game court to, to allow for pickleball, shuffleboard, etc., addition of a conservatory so you can, you know, whether it's even if it's 100 degrees outside, you can still enjoy an, a nice outdoor space um, and still be comfortable. Um, Provide permanent location for happy hours rather than using a dining room. Improve multi-purpose space and offices for Ruth, community life services. And she needs some more storage space, <laughs> for sure. Um, and crafting space, we'd like to have some more crafting space. Um, An improved theater space, coffee shop with access to the new courtyard. Um, improve Laurel dining room. Um, Regrading of the west and central courtyards to make them compliant. Um, improved courtyard and roof drainage we talked about. Uh, Regrading the central drive and provide for better drainage so the Lake Westminster will go away permanently. It was there yesterday? For a couple hours? No more than a couple hours, was it? Don't give me, oh, come on. Okay. Uh, provide for a larger salon, day spa. Um, so because the esthetician and the massage therapist are fighting over that room over there. Um, increase the size of the fitness studio, so we'll be able to add the additional space from the salon to the fitness studio. Um, provide shade above the Harris Bell Hall balcony space, make it more usable. And that's all I have, and it's now 3 o'clock. Thank you very much. I'll see you next month.